Sorry, we're getting going a little bit late here. I had to try to get my last patient right before lunch uh, straightened out. <laughs> Sometimes you get some difficult patients to come in, and uh, but we got him untwisted. He's actually sitting back there in the pink shirt. Uh, he look, <laughs> looks a lot better there. I brought some help with me today. Uh, by the way, my name is Wes Wickwar. I'm the physical therapist and owner of Excelicare Physical Therapy in Garden City. Uh, I see some familiar faces around here. Um, we've been open for 10 years. Uh, I've been a physical therapist for 15 years, and we love providing education to people about how the body works, and how, how, how the body should move. Because once you have the knowledge of how the body should work, then you, you can take that knowledge and use it to make not just your life here at work better, but in every aspect of your life. And we all know that it doesn't just matter what you do here at work, it matters uh, obviously what you do at home as far as how well work goes, it also matters vice versa. So, um, back there in the pink shirt, that's my business manager, a uh, good buddy of mine named Chris. Um, and then we brought our marketing, our new marketing gal, uh, Megan Jones there, in the black shirt. And then a uh, new student from Wichita State is going to be with me for 10 weeks, uh, Matt Brockelman. So, glad to have them here. Don't listen to anything they say about me anytime because it's, it's just not true. So. Um, all right, so the first thing I want to start off with is how the body works. We find that most people don't, just don't have a good understanding of how the body does work. All right? What makes it difficult is we were made to move. We weren't made to sit still. Raise your hand if you sit still all day long. Yeah, so we, we, got, we got some hands going up and down there. All right? Um, I'm lucky because I have a job where you know I'm up moving around the entire day. Sometimes I, you know, I, I do stand most of the day, and there's times by the end of the day you, you're ready to sit down. But um, you know, it's so much easier if, if you are moving throughout the day, and, and that's what we were made to do. Um, but we know that the body, you know, a lot of the problems that we all deal with on an everyday basis are due to staying in the same position for long amounts of time. Whether it's people who stand. Uh, at a drive through all day long or people who sit in front of a computer all day long. Uh, the other thing that we see that causes a lot of problems is repetitive movements over and over and over. Our friends out of Tyson that hook and cut thousands of times every day. We see all sorts of injuries that, that come from that. So those two main things are things that we have to con contend with and cause a lot of problems. Simple things that you don't think of. You, you wouldn't believe how many patients I see on a monthly basis that, or I should say on a yearly basis, that their problem is truly caused by how they sleep. Because they, I don't want to lay down on your table right in front of you, but if you're a side sleeper, and if I'm sleeping on my left side, if, my, if I throw my right leg over, and it comes all the way down to where my knees are touching the bed, what do you think it does to these muscles here? Yeah, it puts them in a stretch position. And if you let a muscle stay in a stretch position for a long enough time, what's gonna happen is it's gonna lengthen and then eventually become weak. And, and we get, you know, people come in and you ask them, what happened? What, what, you know, why are you here to see me? I don't know, you know, my, my hip just started bothering me, my, my back just started bothering me, my, my neck just started bothering me. Um, people who stand like this all the time. I don't know many people who stand symmetrically like this. You always kick out to one side or the other. Women, moms, I don't know how you guys do it. You got a baby on one hip, so you got it kicked out like that. All right, you got a phone like that, you're making a bottle for the other one. You know, I, I, don't know how, I don't know how you just don't walk around in pain all the time. Moms, you guys, you guys amaze me. Um, so, that's, that's what we deal with and that's how the body works. Uh, there's a concept called relative flexibility that, that I think is important to understand. And what that means is the body's going to take the path of least resistance. And what that means for you to sit in front of a computer, if you sit in front of a computer and you're sitting like this in this posture that all of us have, well what happens is eventually this part of the upper back gets really gets really tight. Now, not just ladies here, but all of us, what we don't want to become, when you go to Target and you see that 80 year old lady walking around in her walker like this, and she stands up and she's got that huge hump right there that nobody wants, what happens is that area gets really tight and it doesn't move at all. Here's what the brain does and why relative flexibility is important. The brain says, okay, if we can't get the motion from up here, that's fine. We'll just go up to C6, 7, C5, 6, C4, 5, and we'll get twice the motion from that. Thanks for playing. And what happens is you do that for enough years, C4, 5, C5, 6, C6, 7 wear out. And then you get degenerative disc disease, joint disease, herniated discs, bone spurs, 
all that good stuff. And it's all because nobody taught you how to move correctly. Nobody taught you how to sit correctly. All right? And the nice thing is, is that I see a lot of young people in here, and you know, I don't see anybody in their 80s that's sitting here. So, you know, if you make corrections right now, you can really get some good benefit out of actually moving correctly and sitting correctly. All right? Something else that, that, that our body does that I think is important for you to know is the way we were made is we're always prepared for what we call the fight or flight response. Okay? Uh, a good way to think about it is let's say some smart, smart aleck down at the zoo lets, decides to let the lions out. And it's on the radio, it's on the TVs, we got lions that are loose in Garden City. All right? And you're sitting at your desk and you hear that lions are loose in Garden City and all of a sudden um, you're sitting there and you look there and there's a lion that's, that's just ran into the room. Do you think if you sprained your ankle that morning working out, is that ankle sprain going to be a very big deal to you at that point? No, it's not going to be at all. So our brain can prioritize and it says, yeah, you know, yeah, we did hurt our ankle this morning. That doesn't, that did hurt quite a bit, but, you know, dealing with an ankle sprain sounds better than getting eaten by a lion, so I'm going to go ahead and run out through that door right there and, and you know, it's not going to bother you. Here's what happens. You sprain an ankle, your brain knows that it always has to be prepared for the fight or flight response. So what it does is it says, you know what, those muscles there have been stretched out, they've gotten weak, or the ligament's been injured, let's just develop a new pattern to, to walk or to run. So you go out and you're, if you're a runner and you're crazy, then you go out and you run like this for, you know, four or five miles and then you wonder why your back's hurting. Well, it's because the brain says, we're going to find a way to do it one way or another. We don't really care. If, if that's hurt or that's injured, we'll find another way to do it. And that's what your body does. It's important to understand these concepts here because you'll, you'll see how they come into play as we start talking more about what you guys do every day with your jobs. All right? Another interesting thing to talk about, they did a research study on astronauts quite a few years ago. They looked at their muscle strength, their muscle size, their muscle activation patterns before these astronauts went into space. After eight weeks in space, they came back down to Earth and they remeasured all of that. And here's what they found. They found there was a whole group of muscles that were really important that after being in space for eight weeks, they were much smaller. They, the strength was a lot less and the brain didn't recruit those muscles like they should. And they realized that there are all the joints, the smaller, the smaller muscles that just cross one joint that primarily stabilize. And the bigger, longer muscles, your force generators, they got strong, not stronger, but they, that's what the brain recruited to do those things. So, why does that have anything to do with you guys? Well, if you sit all day, let's say, I don't know how many days you work a year, but hundreds of days a year, and you sit on your rear end, you know, to a certain extent, how's that different than being an astronaut who's up in space that doesn't have weight going through their joints all the time? And that's what they realize is re with research is that if you have a job where you sit all day, those muscles that don't have to fight gravity all the time, the brain says, eh, we don't, we don't need them. We don't need them. We don't need glute max. We don't need gluteus medius. We don't need those guys. Just shut them off. We don't need your multifidus muscles in your low back. Let's forget about them. Let's forget about them. Let's just cheat and use other muscles. So after a while, you sit enough, then you got muscle imbalances that just develop from that. All right? And that, that goes on with the neck as well and the shoulders and all, all across the body. So that's why... We weren't made to sit. We're made to move. We're made to exercise. We're made to do what, um, what we're meant to do. So, and the last thing is you always want to avoid having your joints in the end range position. And we'll talk about this with the neck in a moment. But if you don't mind me, if I can use your hand here. If you give me the, or if, if I give you the option of, I'm, I'm going to put some load down through your finger joint here, okay? So, we're going to say this is position number one, where it's flexed all the way and I push down through there. There's position number two, where it's right there in its mid-range, and then there's position number three, and I push down. Which one are you going to pick if I say, let's hold it for, a, for an hour? You're going to pick the, that, the middle one, right? Mm -hmm. you, you're not, you don't like having everything okay. stretched out and loaded. You don't like it being back like that. Our, our brain wants our joints to be in a mid-range position because we're protected right there. Right? I've never seen a shoulder dislocated in this position right here. It's always when it goes all the way back and then it just pops out the front. If, when your joints are there in their mid-range positions, you're protected and everything's safe. But when they get into their end-range positions, that's when things over time can become a problem. And you'll see that with the neck and the shoulders. 
<clears throat> if anybody has any questions at any time, feel free to raise your hand. And uh, we'll, we'll have Matt answer any question you have since he's an intern and that's what his job is. So. <laughs> Matt didn't think that was too funny. All right, so why do things go wrong? You know, I, we think it's just an overall lack of knowledge. I, I think as a medical profession, we've done a poor job of giving you guys the information that you need to do what you do. All right? Uh, it's taken, you know, I've done this for 15 years, and it's taken me a long time to get to the point where I have the information that, that I have about the human body. Uh, I wouldn't expect you guys to know that. It wouldn't make any sense for you to go home and, you know, spend a ton of time reading about all these things. That's why we have to do a better job of getting the information out to you guys. I think another problem is, you know, I just turned 40 a couple months ago, and my employees, they think they're hilarious. They hung a bunch of stuff up on the ceiling. It was pretty funny. And it was just a week. It gave me a hard time because I turned 40. And, um, you know, as you get older, you start to feel it, right? But the problem is in our brains, how, how old do we feel like we've got a few guys in the room? Uh, testosterone usually leads to bad. Hey! I'm just going to tell you to keep on walking, please. Do you guys have to work with this guy every day? You just thought you were out and didn't have to deal with me today. Yeah. It was. Allie, th thanks for having us. We're, guys, let's go. Let's go ahead. Yeah, I feel bad for you. All right, but. Our brain always thinks that we're 20 years old. I mean, that, that's the reality of it, at least for us guys, and we're not very smart. <clears throat> Mine don't. <laughs> no comment on that. But you go to pick something up uh, that you haven't, you know, that's really heavy, you haven't lifted something like that in a while. Or let's say that your friend calls up and says, hey, I think it'd be a great idea to run a half marathon. And you're like, I do too, you know? All right, let's go train. How, how far are we going to run today? Well, let's start with five miles, and you haven't ran in 20 years. All right, probably not a good idea, right? But your brain always thinks that you go back to when you're 20 years old and you can do anything you want to, and that's just not the truth. Um, we ignore the body's warning signals. Pain. Pain is your body's way of saying when it's functioning correctly. I, let me qualify that. That's your body's way of saying don't do that. We're not ready for what you're asking us to do. You know, There's a certain amount of load that we can tolerate. You've exceeded that. There's a certain amount that we can sit here. You've exceeded that. When people just ignore pain every day, that's when problems are coming down the road. And we're all human, we all ignore pain. I mean, I, I see the results of not addressing stuff when you should, but do you think I instantly have one of these guys work on me when something hurts? No, I'm an idiot, I'll let it go for months and months, and finally you realize you can't do what you wanna do, so you gotta, you gotta get it looked at. And I understand that, but if you let stuff go on long enough and just ignore your body's warning signals, you're gonna have problems. <clears throat> and then the other thing, not so much with you know people who sit from a desk all day, but there's a lot of people, you know, and you know me being a business owner, I in, in one aspect I I appreciate it, but there's a lot of people that just totally disregard their bodies just to get the job done, just so they can do the work they have to do, all right. And in one sense that's ad admirable and, and and you like that, but in another sense, you're going to be worse off down the road because if you can't keep that person healthy, they're not going to be a productive employee, all right. So. We've got to frame this correctly to realize how the body works, how to think about, how to do things, and I think that's where we go wrong. Now, this, this is an area where I think um, there's really bad information uh, out. Most of us think that if something hurts, oftentimes, what should we do? If your back hurts, what do you think, what do you, what, what do you, think you should do? Go lay down. Okay, go lay down, that's, that's one example. What else? If your back hurts, what, what do most people go do? Medicine. Yeah, take medicine, yeah, massage. What else? Stretch, Stretch. Stretch yeah, because it's tight. It feels like it needs to be loosened up. What else? We're missing the big one that we see every day that everybody does. Go get it popped, right? Let's get it popped. Let's get it popped. And you know what? We manipulate joints. I have no problem with manipulating joints. And there's times when something hurts and you'll get it popped, and it feels better. Probably most of us in the room have experienced that. Um, but what we see in our clinic a ton, probably the biggest thing that causes pain that, that I see on a daily basis and I've seen for 15 years is when tissue moves too much. All right, we call that hypermobility. That's just a fancy word for tissue moving too much. It's usually due to tissue above or below it gets too tight. So here's a good example. Let me steal this chair. We'll go back to this 
example here. So if I'm sitting at my desk and I have this great posture that almost all of us have where you're here. <laughs> because why should I have to make my back and my trunk muscles work? I'm sitting. That means I get to shut everything off, right? Should should just sit like that. But so we all kind of sit like this after a while because you get hard, you get tired of doing this. This is hard. You don't want to do this all day long. So after a while, you just do this. Well, I want to show you if this is good posture right here, and my chin and my head's in the right position. Well, watch what happens when I slouch in my low back because this is where bad posture comes from, the low back. Notice I haven't really changed my neck position. If I put my back where it should be, my neck is still in the right position. So as we slouch, we really don't want to look at the ground all day, so what do we do? We look up like that. Now, if I put my low back in the correct position again, look where my neck is at. Okay, does this make any sense to sit like this all day long? So this right here is that. Except instead of just that, it's, let me put about 16 pounds of, of weight down through it. So now let me push you back, and now I'm going to load that up. And I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> we're going to do this for about six hours tomorrow. We're going to do it five days a week, and we're going to do it for, I don't know, 20 more years. that sound good? Yeah. All right. So what do you think is going to happen if you do that, right? I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that if we do that for long enough, you're going to wear this out, this joint, it's going to be in pain all the time, you're going to have problems. So here's the problem, our brain is our brain's just a liar. So we have this issue here, you know, we're sitting like this all the time, this area gets tight, the brain says, okay, we're moving, we're not getting movement here, let's get all of our movement here in our lower neck. So you're sitting there and your friend walks by, and, hey, what's going on? Yeah, hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, okay, looking around. You're getting all your movement here in your lower neck and that's just wearing out. Over time, you get that this hypermobility that we're talking about. It's this. I'm taking the finger and I'm just doing that over and over, and it's wearing out. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> the problem here, and I was talking about your brain lies to you. This joint, these joints are moving way too much. So here's what our brain should say. Our brain should say, "This is not a good situation. You know, we're moving way too much. This is why we're having pain. We need to quit moving there. We need to change our posture. We need to." get some exercises, and we need to stabilize. But guess what your brain says when tissue moves too much? It says, man, if we could just get someone to pop this, it'd just feel better. Or if I could just stretch it out, it'd feel better. So what do you do? So you go see the chiropractor, or a physical therapist, or whatever, or your next door neighbor, and they pop your neck. I was watching, some, somebody sent me a link today on YouTube uh, where somebody just grabbed somebody's neck and put a towel around it and just wrenched it as hard as they can and Yeah, crazy, but so you go get it popped and it feels good for a couple weeks Well, and then you're back at your desk again in your great posture doing this and all of a sudden your neck starts to bother you again You think man that chiropractor helped out quite a you know quite a bit a few weeks ago Let's go back to the chiropractor again and you see him and he or she manip manip manipulates you and you feel better and they, Yeah, man, that, that does feel better. Okay. Let's get back to work well then instead of two weeks later, it's one week later. And then instead of one week later, then it gets to where, you know what, I might want to set up a couple appointments a week because my neck's really been bothering me. And I'm not talking about chiropractors, there's PTs that do this as well, guys. So you go get your neck, your neck manipulated two or three times a week and eventually you get like I was in PT school. I was doing so much reading and looking down back and forth. I got to the point where all I had to do was do that with my head and I could, I could self-manipulate my neck which I'm sure there's people in here that self-manipulate that do that deal and gross everybody out that's at the table with you. But all I had to do was, was lift my chin up and I, and I popped my neck and my neck was bothering me. Well, I got far enough into school where I realized the reason it felt like it needed to be popped is because it was hypermobile. It was just moving way too much. And once I started sitting with better posture, I stabilized, you know, I learned how to move correctly. Guess what? My neck pain went away. But the problem is, Nobody's, nobody's told you guys that when tissue moves too much, even though it feels like it needs to be popped and it feels like it just needs to be stretched out, you know, that's the other thing we hear. If I could just get it stretched out, I mean, uh, can you just show me some stretches? I just, there's no stretch that's going to help hypermobility. There's no manipulation that's going to fix hypermobility. It'll help it temporarily until you get far enough along and then, then even that's not going to help. All right? So what happens once 
the ligaments around the joint and the muscles become stretched out and weak and they don't do their job, you got a whole cascade of problems that are coming after that. All right, swelling and stiffness. Once those joints in your spine, once they become loose like that, then they really do lock up a lot easier because instead of moving in just a small little rings like they should, now they're sliding all over the place and they slide out. I shouldn't say they slide out. They slide far enough to where they get hung up and stuck. And then you do need to go to the chiropractor or PT because that's about as far as you can turn your head. So those are times when you do need to be manipulated, but after that, then hopefully you don't need manipulation after that and you just get back to work stabilized and moving correctly. The other things we see, we see disc problems develop. If this is C5 and this is C6, and I've shown you the posture, and it's moving way too much instead of moving just small amounts, well guess what's going to happen to that disc if you're just shearing all over the place like that? And the disc is going to wear out faster. All right. Eventually, eventually, if that goes on long enough, you're going to get bone spurs, arthritis, pain going down your arm, not being able to sleep at night, loss of function, surgery. How many people do, do we know that have had spinal surgeries? All right. There's a lot of surgeries that have pretty high success rates, but spine surgeries are not one of them. All right, not that there's not a time and a place for it, because there's patients that come in to our clinic a fair amount that we, we throw everything we have at them. They take medications, injections. It just doesn't do the trick. They go have spine surgery, and that's what they need. There's nothing wrong with spine surgery when it's indicated, but it doesn't have a real high success rate, and you just never know what you're going to get with it. So. Um, and I've seen several people over the years that have had multiple spine surgeries and they're just a shell of what they used to be because they can't move anymore. They're in pain all the time. They can't enjoy their life. And it's not just work, it's, it's home. It just, and a lot of it starts from this hypermobility. They move too much and their tissue wears out. All right, now we know other things contribute to it. Genetics has a big impact on it, but we also know the way that you move uh, has a big impact as well. So, knowing what you know now about hypermobility, is medicine going to fix that? I don't think so. Rest. Rest will help a little bit, but when you get back to doing the stuff you want to do again, guess what's going to happen? You're going to go right back to moving way too much. It's going to feel like it needs to be popped and stretched, and it's going to hurt. Repeated manipulations. We've already beat that one pretty hard. Stretching. Is stretching going to help out? Now, stretching is not a bad thing to do with it just because when a joint moves too much, it's stiff. It, you know, the brain says, all right, let's protect it, let's stiffen up. So when it feels stiff, it does feel good to stretch it, but it's not going to solve the underlying problem. Massage, is that going to solve it? I love massage. If I get a massage every week, I would. There's nothing wrong with massage, but it's not going to fix this problem. Braces, that's not going to help. Um, electrical stimulation or a TENS unit, <clears throat> not going to fix it. Ultrasound. Um, sharks with laser beams on their heads, that might fix it. They just haven't done enough research on that one yet. <laughs> right? We're going to do more research on it. Um, grandma's special salve. Anybody in the clinic over 80 years old always has a special salve, and I'm always intrigued about what's in their salve. Um, <laughs> I want to make up my own salve one of these. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it, but there's going to be like pickle juice in there, and I'm not sure what else, but. Probably some copper. Everybody thinks copper helps. I don't know. I, I'm still working on my salve one of these days. Epsom salts, man. There's there's no research that shows that Epsom salts helps with anything, but almost all my patients use Epsom salts. Um, and I, I don't know. If, if, if your brain believes something's going to help, then keep keep doing it. If you think that going home and hanging upside down and letting your dog, ah, if if you believe it's going to help. I mean, keep doing it. That's, that's, that's a message right there. But back to my point, none of this is going to help hypermobility, is it? You're not solving the problem. That's what I want to teach you guys how to do is solve the problem. We, I think a lot of us think that anti-inflammatories, there's not a consequence to taking anti-inflammatories. 76,000 hospitalizations a year and 7,600 deaths occur every year because of anti-inflammatories. It affects your stomach and your intestines. There's side effects there. There's kidney side effects. There's cardio, uh, cardiovascular side effects as well. All right. Now, one thing that's cool is the research shows if you take 200 milligrams of ibuprofen four times a day, that's the same as placebo, which just means that they give you a sugar pill and there's there's nothing in there. There obviously is not going to be any harmful side effects. So, this is actually a safe amount according to what the research shows. So, one of those little pills you can take that four times a day. Uh, now. Most people take 800 to 1,000. 
six or seven times a day, right? Just because they're crazy. But um, we know the anti-inflammatories, there's, there's effects to it. Narcotic pain medicine. Uh, our government, very wisely, has, has finally, they've stood up and they've realized we've got a huge problem on our hands in this country and probably all around the world with um, narcotic pain medication. Um, the effects are devastating. Um, you guys have heard about the risk of addiction and death. It suppresses your immune system. It truly causes abnormal pain sensitivity. Um, I was talking to a, a buddy of mine who's a high school teacher. I don't know if you, any of you all have high school kids or you know, people who teach, but it's a huge problem in our schools right now. This is, you know, these painkillers, it's Oxycontin, Lortab, um, Oxycodone, Percocet. This is what all the kids are doing, and this is what they're passing out in schools. And it's, it's a huge problem. Um, so what the government has done is they've really cracked down on it. And it's going to make it to where if you have a procedure done or have something wrong, they're not going to want to give you just a, they're not going to keep feeding people pain, narcotic pain meds like they used to. It, it's going to be a hassle for you, it truly will. And I guarantee you, if you have to get refills, you're going to be really frustrated because they're going to make it hard for you to get more. And they should. And they should. All right. Now, I've had a couple surgeries. And yeah, by all means, I, I, I needed pain medication. Pain medication is not a bad thing if you're in, in a spot where you have to have it. But we know that it's a, it's, it's a problem that's out of control right now. And we can no longer just ignore the problem and say, we're going to keep taking medicine and we'll be fine. Because we won't be fine. You know, I've got a nine-year-old and a six-year-old, and it, scare, it scares the heck out of me to think that they're going to be, you know, in middle school in a few years, in high school, where there's kids are going to be passing out. I mean, if you think it's not happening at the schools around here, you're crazy, because I know it is. I talk to the teachers and, and the, the law enforcement, they say it's, it's rampant. So it's something we have to get away from. All right, so let's start talking specifically about posture. All right, even the best posture, you don't want to stay in for long amounts of time. We've already talked about how the body's not made to stay still. One hour max is what I would say to stay in any one posture. Now, we talked a little bit ago about good posture, but let me, let me get into a little bit more detail with it. So, good posture truly does start with your low back. There should be a slight inward curve to your low back right here. All right, your head should be over the top of your shoulders like this. Shoulders should be here, relatively uh, 90 degree angles at the hips and the knees and the feet should be flat like that. All right, so this is what good posture should look like. Where most of us get in trouble though is right here with the low back. As soon as you slouch, then come the problems, right? Because unless you want to stare at the floor all day, you're looking up and then we've got the problem that we we're talking about. Um, the chin slightly tucked, that's something that's worth noting, is this is an ideal position for the, for the head. Right? You don't want to be out here in this position like that. What that does, when, you're, when your chin is poked out like that, it stretches out all these muscles in the front of your neck. They've done two big research studies over in Great Britain, and it's quite a few years ago, but they took people that had jobs where they sat all day, clerical jobs, and I think they did one for neck pain and then one for headaches. But um, they found, it's an exercise I'll show you in a little bit here, 80% of the people got better just by strengthening up these muscles that lie deep in the front of your neck, all right? And it's all because of this posture, where you sit and your chin pokes out like that, okay? Just by strengthening up those guys and having better posture, that fixes a lot of the headaches and neck pain. Who all in here has uh, headaches and neck pain? Yeah, yeah. So close to half of you. I'm surprised there's not more. Um, but that's we what lie. <laughs> Probably, right? Okay, so standing posture. Recently, you guys have heard a lot about the standing desk. I think the standing desks are a good thing, but they're not the solution to the problem either. You know, I wouldn't want you to stand for... I see people that come in the clinic that their problem is they have to stand all day in their back and their hips and their knees bother from that. So. On one end, you got the problems from sitting all day. The other end, you got problems from sitting or from uh, standing all day. A lot of people don't stand correctly. When I went to PT school and we started looking at posture, I didn't realize I that I used to stand like this weirdo right here. Nobody told me. I'm standing there and they're looking at my posture and they're saying, "Why do you stand like that?" I said, "What do you mean like that? This is this is how I stand." And they say, "You don't realize that you're that you're standing the way you are. You're you know you're." Much tucked in and everything's forward like that. 
I legitimately didn't realize that I used to just stand like this. But this is called a sway back posture. And what it is, it's a great posture for lazy people that don't want to use their, their butt muscles when they stand. And that's something that's, that's weird, but I think we all do it. When we go stationary, it's like our brain says, all right, let's shut all the muscles off. Let's just relax and just rest on our ligaments. So at our hips, that's what happens. At our feet, instead of maintaining like a, a decent arch position, our brain says, hey, let's shut our arch muscles off, our foot muscles off, and they just flatten out. And when, you're, when those flatten out, the knees roll in, it puts everything in a bad position. We see a ton of people that have plantar, plantar fasciitis or heel pain, and a lot of it is, you look at them when they stand, and their arches are just collapsed. And I think a lot of it's from, a lot of it's from the way they sleep. When you sleep face down, and your calves, or your, uh, your feet are in that position all night, it puts your calves in a shortened position. But the other part of it is, if you stand and you just let your arches collapse, and you stand like that for months or years, what do you think is going to happen? Those muscles stretch out, and then they get weak, and then you have all those problems. And then ladies, you get those really, really beautiful bunions on the inside part of your uh, feet that keep you from being able to wear those crazy shoes you want to wear. So, the take home message is, when you stand, you have to understand how to stand correctly also. And this is what it should look like. You know, hips should be over the top of the, of the ankles. You shouldn't sway forward like that. You shouldn't have a really big inward curve like that. Um, you shouldn't be like some of the farmers that we see where they need the suspenders to hold them up because they've got no rear end to them because they stand like this. And that's how they walk. And you got to have your shoulders back like this. Now, one thing that I see a lot of that I want to point out to you guys that causes a lot of back pain, a lot of people mistake, you know, pulling the shoulders back and having good posture at the shoulders with trunk tilt. I can't tell you how many people that I see that come in, they think they're doing good up top by keeping good posture, but the problem is instead of, instead of pulling back like that like they should, they tilt their trunk back. And then their back hurts. It's me taking her finger and saying, all right, we're going to do that to the low back. Right? So if you've got to stand, you've got to stand correctly. All right. Um, prolonged postures. We've talked a little bit about this already, but um, if you stay still for long enough, basically what happens is the blood and oxygen gets backed up in that tissue. And the pressure in that tissue gets high enough to where it can't get in. Like I said, it gets backed up and then that's when pain develops. That's why, that's why our brains tell us after you sit for a while and stand in the, in the same position, they say, move around, get up, move around, let's flush some of this fluid out of the disc, flush it to other places, and we'll go from there. All right, so I want everybody to stand up, and I want you to find a place, we're gonna lay down on the floor here. I wanna show you how to straighten, I wanna show you that, that neck exercise to straighten up the front of your, uh, from your neck. So find a place where you can lay flat on your back, Hey, I always say to school after lunch because I never could stay awake after lunch or first thing in the morning. So yeah, lay down, lay down on your back. Check it out. So nobody's getting graded here. I promise. Uh, I promise your uh, your bonus won't be based on how long you can hold your head up here. But here's what you're gonna do. I want you to. You're going to do what's called a chin tuck, where you just take your chin and you're going to pull it straight back towards your throat, and you have to keep it in that position. Then I want you to lift your head up about an inch off of the floor. The trick is keeping your chin tucked, and you got to be able to hold it. Ideally, you're supposed to be able to hold this for at least a minute. Now, if you get a headache or neck pain, stop. Most of our patients that come in with with neck pain. Um, Man, 30 seconds at the most. A lot of people can't even do 20 seconds. Don't quite flex that much. That much. So your head shouldn't be up too far. It should just be truly about an inch from the from the floor. So this is that exercise that they gave the people in that big study over in Great Britain. Just getting these neck muscles stronger. Like I said, 80% resolution of symptoms for neck pain and headaches. So, not too bad. I'm impressed here. Okay, get back in your seats there, please. Was that hard for some of you? I've fallen and I can't do it. Okay. 
So part of the reason I had you get up is just to prove prove another another point is that you guys have been sitting the entire time, so I got you up. You changed positions, you redistributed some of the fluid, you got you pushed some of the fluid out of your disc, out of the tendons, flushed it around. It feels better, right? It feels better now to, to, to get up and move around than it did when you were just sitting there. What you see when that when that tissue stays, when that fluid stays backed up in that tissue for long enough, that's when you start to see some of the inflammation, some of the degeneration. If that hangs out long enough, we're going to have problems that develop over time. Okay, so the best strat strategy is posture variety, moving around. All right, I saw something a while back that I was reading, and I, and I really liked it here. And they recommend every 30 to 60 minutes, um, you're moving around, and you don't have to make major changes. It can be small changes. They recommend uh, raising your seat up or lowering it uh, two inches. Uh, tilting your seat. If you have a seat that tilts forward and tilts back, that's great. Scoot your rear end all the way back in the chair and let the back support you, or slide all the way up in front. All right. Here's the thing about it. If, if I bet if I had a video camera on each of you this morning and I could watch how you sat in front of your computer, you're already doing this stuff because our brains. That's okay unless you hold that for a long time. I do. Yeah. I do that too. After a while, you just want to lean back and. No. <laughs> if you guys see Steve doing that, just walk by and kick him. I think that's a great, great thing. But you guys are already doing this stuff. I mean, I'm telling you, but you're, I guarantee you, our brains are smart enough. Our brains realize, hey, we're tired of this position. Let's, you know, everything's backed up in our discs. Let's move around a little bit. We automatically do it. But to help make you aware of it, I think you'll, you'll do an even better job if you understand why you need to do it. All right? Now, upper cross syndrome. I won't spend much time on this, but this is, we call it forward head posture, rounded shoulders, so instead of here, everything rounds out here and the head's out in front of the body. Everything in the back gets stretched out, everything in the front gets tight. This is where neck pain, you know, shoulder pain, headaches, upper back pain, arm pain, this is where all this stuff comes from. Numbness and tingling, uh, we spend a ton of time on this every day. I saw this and I like this a lot, so, um, they have the average head weight about 12 pounds, which I've heard 12 to 16. So an example I like to give my patients in the clinic is I'll say, okay, I've got a bowling ball here that weighs 16 pounds. I want you to hold that bowling ball straight up overhead. I need to get a bowling ball. I, I, that actually be good. I should just do that one of these days. But imagine you hold that bowling ball there. This is not much of a problem, but if I tilt that forward about you know, 10 degrees, it's a little harder. If I tilt that bowling ball forward you know, 20 or 30 degrees, that's going to get really hard, right? Not many people are going to be able to hold that up for very long. What this shows here, as you go forward two inches here and another two inches, basically all these muscles back here that help to hold your head up, in this one they're holding up 12 pounds. When your head goes that far forward, now these guys are having to work that much harder and hold up 32 pounds than it's 42 pounds in that, in that picture. Does anybody ever get any burning right back in there? Yeah, I'm sure you do. I mean, we all do if we sit there long enough, right? Well, this is why. This is completely why it happens, is because you have to hold your head up because it's not in front, it's not over the top, and it's out in front. So that's another reason why that's so important and explains well why those muscles burn quite a bit. Headaches. Um, we see quite a, few, quite a few patients with headaches that come in the clinic here. I don't know why, if anybody's a parent, that's what we want to do because of those little ones, because they're crazy, but I like that picture. Um, there's different, type, different types of headaches. Uh, the most common headache that we see that's due to bad posture for people who sit all day is this suboccipital headache that starts right back in there, and then it runs up the back of your head and comes around here. We call it in a ram's horn pattern right there. Sometimes it settles behind the eyes. That's almost always due to posture when it starts right up here at the base of your head. And the reason that is, is because if this is an ideal position for my head on top of my neck, well, when I slouch down like that and I do this, basically my head has been shoved into extension on top of my first vertebrae. Everything back here gets shortened and tight, and that's why you develop headaches. If, you, if you're supposed to have a certain amount of space for the nerves to exit your neck and to come up into your head, but you just clamp that down with that bad posture, those nerves get pinched and they don't like that, and that's why you get headaches. Something else I want to spend just a little bit of time on 
Um, does anybody have any jaw problems or TMD? Okay, does anybody ever get any temporal headaches right in here? Okay, yeah, I do. I do sometimes also. Or maybe you get some pain right here in, in, in these muscles. Um, you know, we, we see a fair amount of patients that come in with headaches in this region or what they call TMJ or TMD, and it's because, and it's almost always due to stress, guys. Um, what happens is you get stressed out, you don't realize you're doing it, but these muscles that close your jaw, temporalis, masseter, instead of being relaxed like they should be all day long, they, just with stress, they become tight. I'm sure, I'm sure there's some people that grind their teeth at night, or you probably grind your, tea, your teeth during the daytime. Um, if you wake up in the morning and these muscles here are just aching, or these muscles here are just aching, it's probably because you're grinding your teeth at night. And about 80% of the time, if we can get you to stop grinding or clenching your teeth during the daytime, we can get you to stop doing it during the night. But that's where these headaches here come from, is their job is to close the jaw, and if you're grinding uh, or clenching, it's gonna cause that problem. I, I'll actually get this problem, and I know I'm not grinding, but what's happening is I, I just get stressed sometimes, and th those muscles, they're on. They may not be on so hard that I'm actually clenching, but, but they're on. And man, at the end of the day, it just feels so good to get in there and massage that part of your head out and shut those muscles off. So it, it'd be no di different than if I told somebody here, I'd hold your arm up, hold it up like that, all right? I'll be back in about six hours. Go ahead and hold that up. You know, pretty much the whole time, these muscles would scream at you and they'd, and they'd ache after a while. Well, that's what, hap that's what happens with these guys right here. So to combat that, what you want to do is you have to put your jaw in what's called the resting position. You got to let those muscles relax and shut them off. The resting position for the jaw is um, lips together, teeth slightly apart, and your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Okay? I think the reason we're made like that, I, I, I think God wants people like me to not talk so much and shut my mouth and listen more instead of talk, so the resting position, <laughs> lips together, teeth slightly apart, tongue on the roof of your mouth. When you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, don't push it up against the back of your teeth. It should just rest up there in that concavity in the top of your top of your palate, All right? Everybody put their put their tongue there. And oftentimes, what our patients will feel when we do that is they'll just feel, because we'll ask them, okay, get in, get in a good position. Do you feel more relaxed? And a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, I actually do kind of feel relaxed because I think a lot of us don't realize we go around all day with, you know, with with these muscles on. These muscles are on, All right? They should be relaxed. Shoulder pain. Um, obviously, the girl on the right is going to have some problems. The girl on the left, it looks a lot better. With this posture right here, what it does is it takes your shoulder blades, and it instead of them sitting on the back, if you're looking at the front of my shoulder blades, instead of them just resting naturally on the back of the rib cage, what they do is they slide forward, and they slide around, and they tilt like that. Whenever you go to reach up overhead, if this is a socket and that's the ball, well, there's a bone that forms a roof over the top of that. As you go to reach up, if those shoulder blades are tilted forward and around like that, what you do is you pinch your rotator cuff every time you go up like that. And eventually you develop shoulder pain and problems when you reach up overhead or reach across your body or reach back. So that's why bad posture, we see it all the time, is a huge cause of shoulder problems because your shoulder blades are in a terrible position and they get to where they can't move like they need to. And it puts more strain on the neck as well. All right? Nerve dysfunctions, that's another, you know, consequence of having bad posture. We see a lot of patients that come in with, um, the most common thing we see obviously is um, carpal tunnel problems. Your carpal tunnel, that's just a space where your median nerve runs down to your fingers and hands. Does anybody have any carpal tunnel problems? Does anybody have any numbness at night in their hands when they fall asleep? Okay, that's good. This is a good, you guys are more of a healthy population. In the, morning. in the mornings? Yeah. yeah, you'll see that too sometimes also. But um, we'll get patients that come in, they've had both carpal tunnels uh, released with surgery, they've had both cubital tunnels released, um, maybe both radial tunnels for the radial nerves, and you get to talking to them and you ask them, has anybody ever looked at your neck? Well, no. Or they'll say, yeah, I had a neck fusion, you know, 10 years ago. Here's one reason why you get some of this stuff with your nerves down your arm, down your arms is because if I sit with this good, good posture right here, 
I have plenty of space in the side of my neck where the nerves exit out to go down to my arms. But guess what happens if I do this? I clamp it down. Instead of having spaces, let's just say, let's just say that's normal and the nerve exits out like that. When you clamp down like this, that's what you got now. It's like if you're trying to, the, an example we give patients is let's say your grandma's out trying to water, water her flowers and she's, her grandkids are staying there with her and they're honoring. Well, she's got a full stream of water she's trying to water and one goes behind the tree and kinks the hose maybe 50%. And she's got a little less water but she can still do it. Well then the other sneaks behind the fence and kinks it 50% more and there's still some trickling out there but there's not much water getting through the hose because there's two different points in that hose where it's being kinked off. Well, you give me somebody who's got this terrible posture right here, we're kinking the hose right there, and then somebody who maybe their wrist position's bad when they're, when they're typing and it's cocked back like that, well then you've kinked the hose right there. So you've got two spaces along that median nerve where it's being pinched. So a lot of times a carpal tunnel surgery could be avoided just by having good neck posture, by not clamping those nerves down like that. Okay? All right. Um, let's talk about monitor position. This, is, this one's pretty simple. The top of your monitor should be right there at eye level. Um, a big one that I see causes problems is it shouldn't be off to the side. I talked to a patient yesterday that has three monitors. I said, man, you like a mission control. <laughs> three monitors, I don't see that one very often. Um, but the example, if I can see your finger again, instead of me cocking her finger back like that, if, you, if you're looking at monitors off to the side like that, it's no different than if I take your finger and I twist it there and I hold it. It doesn't feel great, does it? No. But if we leave it there for about three hours today while you're looking at that computer off to the side, and we do that for days and weeks and months and years, we've got problems. That's why if you, have, if you have a desk where you have to deal with the public, and you got your computer off to the side, that's fine, I understand that. You need, to you need to be able to turn and be able to do this for your computer and then swivel back and talk to your, talk to your people. But this business here of, you know, turning the head like that, I could probably book your appointment right now on my, on my schedule because that's what's gonna happen. I, mean, I see that so many times. I saw a lady a while back, uh, what truly what caused her problem was she looked down at a piece of paper the whole time while she was trying to type. We did all a bunch of hands on stuff and strengthened her up, but as soon as she told me that, she didn't tell me that originally, I didn't ask the right questions, but as soon as she told me that, I said, we've got to get a thing to hang your paper next to your monitor, and she did that and her problem's gone. Now, I think a lot of times people think by coming, to, coming into physical therapy, oh, I've got to sign up to go see those guys for you know, 10 times, and it's going to be a ton of money and a ton of problems. I've got to get off work. You'd be surprised how many times we can fix your problem just by talking with you and saying, hey, what do you do every day? Show me the, you know, take pictures of your workstation and bring it in to me and let's look at it. More times than not, that, that's what causes problems because it's what you do every day over and over. And we already talked about the document holder. Okay, uh, forearm position. A huge cause of neck pain and shoulder pain is if you sit there and there's nothing supporting your forearms. You have to have something to support the weight of your arms here, or it's just gonna, it's just gonna mess your neck up. Uh, stand on up here, please. If you don't mind, okay. If you don't mind, I'm just going to, I'm just gonna pull down on your shoulders. We're just gonna do that for, we'll do that for about eight hours, okay? <laughs> you good? No. That feel pretty good? No. Well, that's what you're. That's why after a while, you your brain starts saying, can we stop? Can we do something different? Now, obviously, I, I was pulling down hard, but, but it's, it's the same exact problem. If you just let your arms hang down the whole time, these muscles are fighting against gravity. I'll show you a good example here. This guy's my workout partner. I was about as swollen as he was. <laughs> but I didn't want my neck to start hurting when I was typing, so I, he kept going, and I just, you know, I, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to be healthy. So. But obviously a guy like him could have some problems if he's doing much computer work, right? I'm guessing he's not doing much computer work. All right, so ways to have posture variety. You can use a mouse and a trackball and interchange those out. Uh, the recommendation that I've seen that, that, that I like is to switch every hour, right? Um, a mouse all day, 
you're lifting up this finger. Has anybody here ever, ever had a tennis elbow? That's a fun thing, isn't it? Tennis elbow and plantar fasciitis are the two hardest things we have to treat. And a lot of it's because try getting through a day without gripping or extending your fingers right there. It's, it's impossible, right? So it's, it's really hard to put rest on those guys. So, but if you're using a mouse all day and, you, and your, your wrist is cocked and you've engaged these muscles that anchor from that spot and fingers are going up and down, you're just gonna, you're gonna wear that tissue out. So that's why the track ball is a good idea because you're gonna use different muscles, different fingers. Um, I, I really like that. You gotta, you gotta vary it up a little bit. I stole this picture from the 1970s, but I think it's a good picture. Um, if you look at the top one right here, you want your wrist to be in this neutral position, okay? What you don't want is this business right here. If you look at the top one, and it drives me crazy, most office chairs are terrible because the arms are way out here. I don't know if they make them for NFL linemen or what, but you know, for most of us, to be able to keep our wrists in a neutral position, you should have arms that actually are able to slide in and out. I don't, but I haven't seen hardly any chairs that do that. I know they make them, they're probably 1200 bucks, but uh, you need something that can go in and out like that. That's what makes it so difficult because if your arms are out wide like that, unless you have one of those curved keyboards, which those aren't a bad thing, then you're gonna be in this position right here. And that's where you get a condition called decoravanes, tenosynovitis right there. You'll start having pain right along your thumbs and your wrists. Right, and then the other thing is, you don't want your wrist to be extended. That's a good way to get carpal tunnel or flex too much. This is ideal where, you, where your wrist is in, a new, in that neutral position. Okay, and that's where those foam pads that sit right about there are so good because they help to keep you in a neutral position. Uh, keyboard considerations. We talked about the curved keyboards. If if you if you just have arm rested or wide, and that's that's where your arms are, you may need one of those curved keyboards. Okay. Um, the other thing I didn't talk much about this, but we talked about how we don't want to let your arms hang down. But truly, you know, having a, close to half of your forearm supported is is probably best case scenario whenever you're typing. This works also, but you know, if, if there's not much of your forearm to hold the weight of your body body up, what's going to happen is these neck muscles and these upper trap muscles they work. So, if you can have your forearm supported by something to where they're not all the way hanging down, but they're being supported. That's best case scenario. Which oftentimes mean, means you got to push your monitor back on the desk. Okay, you can't see this very well because she's got a white shirt on and a white phone, but this just shouldn't happen anymore. Uh, it, it, it's a great way to get to see chiropractors and us a ton is doing very much of the cell phone right there. Now, do we all do it? As, you know, sometimes, yeah. I'm saying for, if I'm saying I would not do that, do this very often or for long, long amounts of time because what's going to happen is you're going to get neck pain, shoulder pain, pain down your arm. It's just, you know, grab your headset um, or your earpieces. But yeah, no more of this. Standing desks again, they're a good thing, but don't do it too long. Uh, bifocals. I don't know. I had to put this picture here because I don't know to think about these guys but it was pretty awesome so um, you know bifocals you might hear got does anybody here have bifocals? I have polyfocals. Polyfocals. Yeah you're going above and beyond. Right. That's right. So here's the problem with bifocals. This is this is this is what we see with our patients with bifocals. To see the top of the monitor, what do you got to do? You got to tip your head back, right? Well, you've listened to me spout, spout off enough stuff already to know what's going to happen if you tilt your head back and forth over and over and over. All right? You're going to have problems. You're going to have pain. What you have to do is, the best thing is probably just to get a cheap pair of glasses where you don't have to, that, that are, you just leave them there at your computer. They're there for your computer. Or if you're going to read, you're going to have them there all the time. But I would not use bifocals if I sit in front of a computer all the time because you're going to be playing that game the entire time. Okay? I know you can get them opposite, but the cheapest way is just to get just to get a, a pair that's just for just for reading. Okay, posture reminders. I think this is really really important. Uh, if you go to if you go to the app store and just type in posture reminders, it's going to give you like 30 of them. So I hate to tell you just one. I hate to tell you one, but I've got one. Let me see what I have here. 
it works pretty well. I don't sit, but I just got it for these presentations. It's called Stand Up. And what it does, every 30 minutes, it just buzzes you or dings you. It reminds you to stand up. It tells you it wants you to live a long, happy life or something. Stand up. But you guys know as well as I do, what's gonna, what happens when you sit down? What happens when you sit down and you get, in, you know, you get engrossed in your, in your work? Are you going to stop every 30 minutes and remember to do this? No, absolutely not. I don't think this works without posture reminders. And we have these apps, they're, they're free or they're cheap. Uh, I think you have to do that. Something else you can do is if you're somebody who's got back problems and you're sitting this whole time and all the fluid in your disc is pushed backwards, every, uh, you know, when you get a chance every 30 minutes, stand up and do some back bends if that doesn't hurt. Or stand up and move around. Okay? All right, stretching. I put the, gen the, the genius of Richard Simmons on here. All right, there's all sorts of stretching you can do. Um, stretches aren't a bad thing to do. They're not everything that we, that we once thought they were, but um, I don't have them with me, but I'm going to get Allie a list of stretches that you guys can have, that just a simple list that you could do. It would be self-explanatory. Okay, and exercises. All right, come on up front and let's go over these exercises. I want to show you um, these exercises that I have. And Allie, I made, a, I made a list of these. There's pictures and explanations for these exercises. I'll just give these to you, and if you want to copy them and do maps for people, you don't have to do it right now, but just whenever. Um, guys, come on, come on up front so you can see. Actually, can I, can I see those so I can remember <laughs> which ones? All right. So the goal is to give you guys enough information to where you don't need to what? To hurt ourselves. Yeah, yeah. To make it to where you can manage this, manage these problems on your own, to where you don't have to go see chiropractors, physical therapists, doctors, take medication all the time. And the nice thing is, if you move correctly and you do some of these simple exercises, you'll get to that point where you can manage this stuff well on your own. So the first one I have is that chin tuck and head lift. Just to show you what it, what it should look like, this is it right here. I tuck my chin, I lift my head right there. If your head was up here earlier, that's not what we wanted, so it's here, and just hold that. You need to get to where you can hold that for a minute, and you should feel the burn right there. Oh. You don't want to feel, <laughs> oh, I, I got a minute at least. You don't want to feel a headache in the back, though. If it's bringing on a headache, that's, that's no good, okay? So, uh, 18. I'll hit it for you. Thank you. I'm allowed to do that. I forgot to bring my band, but um, I like this one also, just to work on getting the neck muscles stronger and the shoulder muscles. You can do you can do a full plank, or you can do just a modified plank. And you take it there, band, and you wrap it around your head. So this would be the modified plank, and I would have the band going around my head, and it would be tight, and I'd have to hold my head in that position. Even better is just to come up to a full plank position, and you just hold that right there. Because these muscles that we're trying to work back here, they're postural muscles. They work all day long. So you don't necessarily want to train them with short, quick, intense bursts. You want to hold them for long amounts of time. All right. That band is tight? I yeah. Mean, it's yeah, it's one of those stretchy band and therapy uh -huh. band, and yeah, it's nice and tight. And it, it's trying okay. to push you down, but you're pushing back against okay. it. All right. Uh, eyes, T's, and Y's. I like this one a lot where you just lay in this position, and with your body from the top down, you make a T. You tuck your chin, and you hold right there. And you hold as long as you can. Start off with 20 to 30 seconds, but now you want to keep your chin tucked. You don't want your head out like this. You just hold right there. You can do an I, where the arms are there, or you can do a Y. The Ys are the hardest, and you just hold like that. And you should feel that burn in the back part of your shoulders, in the back, in the upper part of your back as well. Okay. These things are pretty cool. You can actually buy these now. For a long time, you know, we had them and you could order them from medical catalogs, but you can probably buy these from, I'm sure Dix has them. But, and a lot of people, you know, they roll stuff out, they roll, roll their muscles that are sore, and, and that's fine to do. What we like to use them for is for posture. So if you're one of those people who sits in this position all day long typing or reading your text like that, 
a good way just to get out of that position is just to come here and you just let your arms hang down like this. And it's, a, it's actually a great relaxation exercise. You just work on your breathing and you just make sure your chin's not poked out like that, but you stay in this position. And you let gravity stretch you down. We get patients that'll lay on these for five or 10 minutes, um, but it's a pretty cool way just to lay there and relax and stretch out, and get you out of that bad position. And you can do all sorts of exercises with it. You can make snow angels with it. I've had a couple of surgeries, so I can't do these well, but uh, you can reach up and down on each side. You can reach up and clap. So what it does is that middle part of your back, that upper part of your back that gets tight, you can really stretch that out well with these. It's, it's good stuff. Okay, I'll definitely need a helper for this one. Um, is my short. Yeah, you get over here. Take a toothpick, yeah. Now you're choking on it. You know, we got a little ledge here, but since it's Steve, I, I, I don't care. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, that'll work. So, let me show, let me show you the, the basics of what it should look like. This is one you can do in your office pretty easily. So you're in that position all day, we want to get you back. A good way to do it is just to come here, put your back flat, put your head flat, and then try to put your arms all the way back and just slide up and down like that. Again, I can't really do it because my shoulders are bad. But, so let's try it. What you'll feel, your middle trap muscles and these muscles back here will actually start to burn a little bit. You want to put your pinkies up against the wall? You're a little tight. <coughs> Yeah. And you want your back to be on your flat. Knees should be bent. Okay. That's as flat as I go, but. <laughs> corn husker right there. I should know better than the grab a corn husker. But that's what it looks like right there is you're going up and down. I could probably grab one of these ladies and that are way more flexible and they could do it well. That's a, that's a simple exercise you could do. Kind of look like an old chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and you just go back and forth there. Uh, you could do, you could knock ten of those out and get back to work pretty easily. All right. Um, another one here is called a headache snag. You need a towel for this. Basically, you take a towel and you wrap it around the base of your head and you hold it tight and you do just a little chin tuck. And what it does, it's a self mobilization to get this the base of your head loosened up right here where it sits on C1. Okay, because we said. We all sit like this most of the day and then it gets tight. You come up into that position and then you just nod your head. Just do that. Just stand up nice and tall and just nod your head a little bit. And can you feel the pull at the base of your head? Well, if you put a towel there at C1 and do that, it gives you even more of a pull and it's a mobilization and it works really well. You can help out with headaches quite a bit. And the last one here, this is one of my favorites because it works the neck and the shoulder. That hump I talked about that nobody wants to get, what you can do to loosen that area up so that it does its share of the work and that this part of the neck doesn't, doesn't get abused, you can take your fingers, put it right there where that hump is on either side of it. You're going to tuck your chin and put it in its neutral position. And then, we call this a butterfly self mobilization then you just go back and forth like that. You don't have to come all the way forward. But what you don't want is this. That's what the brain wants to do. It just says, let's just get it from the lower neck can't let that happen. You hold the chin tucked. So try that. Try the hands back here. Tuck the chin. Keep your head. Now don't put your head in front. You've got to be in neutral with your chin tucked. And then just come back and forth. You should feel some tension in between your fingers right there at your upper back. Make sure your fingers are at your neck. They've got to be below your neck. Can you guys feel that? Yeah, and when I'm done with it, it feels good because I, you've been rounded out, but it feels good to pull everything back and engage those muscles. If, if you ask me what are the two best exercises you, that I could do in my office just to keep myself from having problems, it'd be that one and it'd be the one on the wall where you're just going back and forth like that. Most, you can do this so, so easily, quickly, and get back to work. Okay? So those are the exercises, and I'll leave those you for copies and there's there's explanations of how to do them all right go ahead and have a seat here do you guys have any questions for me at all oh hope your fingers okay <laughs> all right 
No questions at all? Okay. Yes, ma'am. So are those keyboards that are kind of split in the middle and then they're like the keys are spread out, are those bad then? No, not necessarily. Are, are they curved or they're just... Yeah, they're curved ones. Yeah, no, I don't think they're bad. Honestly, if, if your elbow's resting on your chair are wide like that, then it actually keeps your wrist in neutral, right? Because remember, this is what we want. We don't want that. And we don't want that also. We want to stay in that neutral position. So again, most of the chairs, they don't, they don't have arm supports that stay tight like that where you can stay in this position. Pretty much about the only way to stay in this position is if you can scoot far enough forward to where you're on the desk like that. But yeah, I don't know why they make the armrests so wide, but no, those are fine. I have no problem with those at all. I think they keep your wrist in neutral. It's a good thing. Okay. Well, if we don't have any questions, um, we can move on to the next part. Now, if you guys ever have any questions or have any problems, uh, we get patients that, or people that call us all the time and ask, ask questions. Or, and I have my email right here. Feel free to shoot me an email if you have any questions because there's a lot of times we can take care of some simple stuff over email or a phone conversation. Sometimes we have you come in, but um, we want to help people stay out of pain for sure. And, I and we appreciate what you guys do. Um, if the stuff for the city doesn't work well, obviously uh, we all suffer, so we want to keep you guys as healthy as possible. So we really appreciate what you guys do. All right, thank you, Dr. Ross. Yeah. Thank you.